Hi, I'm Bob Wormsley and we've got another free video tutorial for you. Today we're going to be looking at simulating some realistic snow. So we'll be setting up this FluidFX grain sim, we will then mesh it and then do some rendering in Cycles 4D with some subsurface scattering. Let's build a scene. So first of all we need a floor object, so we're going to bring in a plane just make it a bit wider than the default and we'll make it editable by hitting C. Then I'm going to go to Mesh, Axis Center and what we want to do is move this Axis Center point to the 100% Z, Execute and now the axis of this plane is here. So this means that if we rotate, it rotates from this point. Okay, so let's um, just hit Control and rotate it. We're making a duplicate and we'll fold it over like that. And then we've got our two planes. Um, now if I go into polygon mode and select all, you'll see that the one we've flipped them so the normals are on the underside and really we, um, we don't want that. We want the normals to be on this side. And we, we can sort that out uh, later on but it might just trip us up. So to save that let's just go to mesh normals and reverse okay so now we're all have the normals facing in the correct direction fantastic so let's bring in an x particle system and for this emitter it's going to be our snowball so we're going to go to the object tab change it from rectangle to sphere and let's drag that up i'm just going to scale it down a wee bit and we want to drag it we're going to drop this onto our um, slope something like that okay good and in the emitter we want to emit in hex mode hex hexagonal and we want to emit on one frame only and we want no speed so take the speed off and let's go to the display mode I'm just going to change it from dots to circles filled which will show the actual radii of the particles so let's go forward a frame and we've spawned all of these particles and just so we can see those individual spheres I'm going to go to the options and in the open GL options I'm going to activate ambient occlusion and then we can have a look at these particles so what's what hexagonal has done is it's spawned to these particles within the volume of this sphere and it's done it in an, an hexagonal grid so they're all really well packed together without any intersecting and that's really important when you're doing grains you want them to be as tightly packed as possible but without being intersected whatsoever great so in hexagonal mode the way you get more particles is by reducing the particle radius because if you do this obviously it can then fit more particles within that volume so now I've got more particles let's leave it at that for now so what I want is these particles to react with our slope and our floor let's just rename them so we know what they are let's call that one slope and that bottom one floor and we want to give them both uh, X particles collider tags. Let's go to tags, X particles tags, and collider. And let's just turn the bounce off and put a bit of friction on. We'll adjust that later. Okay, good. And then we want those particles to drop down. We need gravity. So we'll go to modifiers, motion modifiers, gravity. And now they should drop. And there you go. That's your snow. End of tutorial obviously not so what we need to do is we need these particles to now behave like snow and um, so we're going to use a granular simulation to do that so what we need is a dynamic object and we need fluid FX which allows us to simulate grains so let's hit fluid effects now by default this is set to simulate fluid so it's not going to look like snow let's have a look and it splashes down so it's behaving more like a liquid so how do we make it behave like grains? Well, what we do is th those settings are actually in the emitter, the thing that's creating the particles. So let's go to the emitter, extended data, and then we have a fluid data tab. And here by default, the fluid type is set to liquid, but we can change this to granular. So let's do that. Let's increase. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to need 100% friction. Let's hit play. And this still isn't going to look like, like snow. 
So it's not behaving like liquid anymore. It's, it's clumpy, isn't it? And it's kind of looking a little bit grainy, but not really. So what do we need to do to get this start behaving like grains? Well, first of all, we need to go to the fluid FX settings. Now, there aren't that many settings in here, and all they do is dictate how accurate the solve is. An inaccurate solve will simulate very quickly, like this one is, almost in real time in our viewport. But it's not going to be very accurate, and we're going to struggle to clump together our grains. The more accurate the solve becomes, the better it's going to look, but the hit is the longer it's going to simulate, and it can almost be kind of like an exponential scale. It can get slower and slower and slower very fast. But what we have done for you, uh, we have accuracy presets, which basically mean that you can just hit a preset and you're going to get um, increased accuracy in a better sim without having to mess around with a lot of these features down here. So let's just try one of those presets. Let's go instead of fast, we'll put it onto high and let's see what happens. Ah, now we're getting clumps. Just by setting a more accurate sim, we're starting to get clumps. Now that is interesting. So what might we do for this to be even more cohesive? Well, we could go to the emitter, to the extended data tab, to fluid data, and we have these settings. Now, stability is an important one for grains because what it's saying is the higher the stability, the less likely the grains are to split apart. So they're going to stay together more. But it's not quite as simple as that, because if I ram this right up to a thousand, you would think it's going to stick together like a cohesive ball, but it still breaks apart. But you see, it's trying to stay together, but it's not looking very good, is it? It's kind of jittering about the place and it's not looking right. So if we reduce that stability, it's still looking a bit weird. And until we get down to around 30, it's starting to break apart, but still not looking great. A bit lower than 30, and now it's smashing apart. So we're not really able to use this stability slider to um, really hold these particles together, especially at an accu accuracy setting of high. So how are we going to get this um, to stay together more? Well, one way of doing it is to go even higher in the accuracy. So let's go to accurate, which is, is giving really high settings. You're going to see this is going to be so much more slow to simulate. But look, that ball is holding together much better. So what I'd advise is, in your emitter settings, only make small adjustments from the default for stability. Don't try and use this to hold particles together. Um, you're not going to get a good a, a good look. You want to make little micro adjustments with stability and most of your adjustments are going to be made using the accuracy settings. So that's the presets but if we go back to fluid effects and we change this from accurate to I'm just gonna let's just stop that playing. We'll change it from accurate to custom. So now custom allows you to manually set all of the things that accuracy was doing for you um, uh, automatically. And the advantage with using custom is we can dial up the parameters that we need that further accuracy from, but not worry about the other um, settings which aren't going to have that much of an impact. So hopefully we can get the same look as the accuracy settings, but it can actually calculate a little bit more quickly. And um, here, I'm not going to go through exactly what all of these mean. Um, we need some specific training in its own right for all of these fluid effect settings. But what I want you to show you is min steps and max steps and min iterations and max iterations. Now, effectively, what the, the steps are for, min and max steps, is how it calculates velocity um, of how each individual particle is moving. And then the min and max iterations, it's how it's solving the density of each particle. And I know that we don't actually need to worry too much about density in this granular solve. So what I'm going to do is keep the minimum at two and reduce the max iterations of density down to two. 
And then all I'm going to do is we're going to uh, kind of brute force this. We're not going to use min-max. We're just going to use the same amount in both. So let's just start at 5 and 5. Now, I think that this should give us a similar solve. But actually, it's a quicker solve. So what we have set here in custom isn't as accurate as what we get in our accurate solve. But let's boost that up to, say, 8 and 8. Okay, and that's a similar solve to what it was on accurate. So let's move it back onto accurate and let's see. So it's a lot slower. Okay, and then put it back to custom, how we had it. I think custom is breaking up a little more, which suggests it isn't as accurate. Yeah, so let's boost that up to say 10 and 10. But you can see it's calculating way more quickly uh, and we're getting a similar look. So that's going to work well for us. The only other area where we're able to change the accuracy of a sim is if we hit con uh, Control or Command D to get your general Cinema 4D project settings, we have an X Particles tab in those project settings. And there is also a global X Particles subframe steps and accuracy. So this is the same principle as the fluid effects steps and um, iterations. The difference being the fluid effects ones only affect fluid particles, whereas if we hit Control or Command D, these ones will affect everything. So if we up the subframe steps, it's going to kind of double per frame the calculations for all of the X particles things, for fluid effects, for uh, modifiers, for everything. So let's just boost this up to two global subframe steps, which will kind of calculate the gravity more um, accurately and see if we get a, a nice look from that. Let's see what happens. So it's slower, but we're getting a nice break apart. So that's looking pretty decent. So I'm going to keep it at that. So now the last thing we're going to do is we are going to spawn way more particles. So let's basically we need to mesh this to get our render. So actually, I'll just mesh it with the existing amount of particles. Let's just go to emitter, display, hood, show hood. So we've only got, well, it's under 2,000 particles. Um, so I know that when we try and mesh this, it's going to look too blobby. We're not going to have enough detail, but let's have a go. We'll go to generators, open VDB mesher, and what we want to do is drag in our emitter as the source. Now, by default, we're getting these huge blobs because it's meshing each of those particles, but it's putting a point radius of 10 centimeters around each particle, which is too much. So we need to bring that down. You can see it's, 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 it's sucking in towards those particles. And let's just go down to a point radius of two. Oh, let's go down to one. And the mesh has disappeared. Why has it disappeared? Well, because the voxel size is set to 4, which means there isn't enough voxel data to incorporate these particles. They're too small. They lie within the voxel, so it can't see them. So we bring this down. Now we've got our mesh back. Let's just make that emitter invisible. And let's raise the point radius up a bit because it's a little bit too detailed and defined here. So here is our mesh. Now we could go to filters, add a filter to smooth that out, but it's looking a bit blobby, isn't it? We could go to, we could bring in an offset filter to try and kind of suck that in a bit to bring the detail back, to offset the surface of that volume, which brings detail. But I know that this isn't really going to work. This is not going to look convincing. Um, at this particle resolution. It looks all right, but I know that it's going to look better for final render with higher resolution. So let's just switch off that mesher for now. And we'll go back to our emitter. And let's see, in the emitter emission tab, we have got two centimeters radius, which is giving us just under 2000 particles. Let's put this down to one centimeter. Now you'll notice with one centimetre we've got way more particles, so it's going to take loads longer to calculate. And you might also find that it is much more kind of solid. And so if you want it to break up more than this, we're going to get a nice smash at the bottom though. That's looking good. But if you want it to break up more on impact, 
Now you've raised the particle count. What you'd want to do is go to the extended data tab and reduce that stability. So let's just try. I'll, I'll reduce it to say 10. Now we should get this breaking up a bit more. We might need to go even lower than 10. Let's see. So yeah, you can see that's that's cracking up nicely, isn't it? And then these big bits are going to have a nice big smash impact when they hit the floor. Very nice. So now we've got more detail. If I reactivate my open VDB measure, it's going to take longer to calculate because it's making an awful lot more calculations to mesh those particles. And let's just turn filters off. And so the offset filter is set too much and it's losing the entire mesh. Right, so I'm going to turn that filter off and I'm going to turn the median off. So this is our mesh by default. Let's have a look in the mesh settings because now we have more particles. We might be able to make some adjustments here. I'm just going to hit ND to see the lines. So you can see it's quite a detailed mesh um, and A to get rid of those. So let's see if we reduce that point radius down a wee bit and then we, they've disappeared again because again we haven't got enough a small enough voxel size to be able to see the individual particles let's reduce the voxel size down to one so now we're getting much more detail in that snow maybe let's just go up 1.2 so what you're doing you're going to be pushing and pulling these two amounts until you've got something that you like and then just to smooth out some of these edges what you're able to do is go to your filters and include any of these default filters which have various different looks, the smoothest of which is the Gaussian. But another thing, the Open VDB Mesher, because it's X particles, it works with all of Cinema 4D's deformers as well, and it works particularly well with the smoothing deformer. So if I just make this smoothing deformer a child of the mesher, and if I just increase this stiffness, which is basically this is a smoothing strength slider, let me just make those particles invisible so if we put it on 100% stiffness there isn't really any smoothing at all but then if we drag this down you see it's smoothing that mesh out and it works pretty well and it's it's quite fast so let's have a look so this is going this isn't going to run very quickly in our viewport because we've got all of those sub steps and iterations we've got a highly detailed mesh and you can see these really nice clumps now and these are going to make a nice smash as they hit the bottom and then smash and so here it is the more detailed your simulation the more particles you have the longer it's going to take to simulate but the more smooth and accurate your mesh is going to look because it has more data to play with to give you a really really good mesh um, for the uh, purposes of this tutorial I'm not going to go any higher resolution than this I'm going to stick with the emitter emitting at one centimeter radius particles but if i was doing it for something that needed to be for production i might well be down to 0.2 centimeter particles with hundreds of thousands in the simulation to get um, a mesh that is smooth and convincing enough as snow so before we start on the render let's just have a look at the display of the particle emitter show the hood so now we've got 14,000 particles making up our sim. And I would say with a snowball like this for really good quality, you're going to want probably 10 times this particle count. But let's just keep it at this for now um, so we can get moving quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to render this scene now. So let's, um, what do we need to do? We're going to render this using... Uh, uh, light objects as usual so we're going to start with a plane now what we want is um, a subsurface scattering material to get our nice snow and so for that i want some nice lighting from above and i want the lighting from above to be quite big so it's going to be this big plane is going to be my top light all right and so to get that to show up if i um jump into my cycles 4d layout you'll see that we're rendering i'm not seeing anything and that's because no objects in here have any light yet so let's go to my material area here and actually i'm just going to jump back to my regular view 
just while we create this. So we're going to create a Cycles 4D surface and it's an emission surface and we're going to put that emission surface on our plane. And let's, now I'll jump into my Cycles 4D touch. So now this plane is lighting our scene. So if I kind of get a camera angle, now we can see that that plane is lighting this. Excellent. So let's just increase the strength. And there we go. So we have our top light. Um, now I'm also going to use, let's just pause that. I'm just going to jump back into my startup layout. So I'll put in a camera where that is. We might adjust that later, but let's just put a camera with a protection tag on. So we're lighting it from above, but I also want uh, another plane and I'm going to light it. This is more just for kind of to kind of bounce a reflection really. So I'm going to turn this plane that way and let's move it back up. So this one I want to be quite thin, quite long. And this is just going to be kind of like a reflective plane really. And to fill in the front of the snowball a little bit. So I'm going to make another mission texture by control dragging it, put that on there. Okay, so go back to my Cycles 4D layout. There we go. So let's think about texturing our snowball. Uh, I can get rid of that material. Uh, so create Cycles 4D surface, and we're going to use a principled shader. And this principled shader, let's put it on our open VDB mesh. And let's just switch on subsurface scattering and press play go into our camera and reset that okay so the subsurface scattering color is by default set to this kind of coral color and you see you can see that subsurface scattering is starting to work so what i'm going to do i'm going to turn off the specular for now I don't want any specular because if you see if i just put that specular back on the specular makes it look like kind of wet ice which isn't really the look i'm looking for so we'll we'll stick that off and let's change this color to a neutral no so no saturation i'm going to have it a gray and then I'm going to turn down, let's put the base color to white. Or well, actually the base color could perhaps have a, the tiniest little suggestion of blue in. And I'm going to turn down that subsurface scattering. Okay, good. Turn it down even more maybe. Right, so that's kind of looking better. Let's darken up this floor and slope. So we'll do create Cycles 4D surface. Let's just do a diffuse for now. I'm going to put the diffuse on the floor and the diffuse on the back plane. And just for now, I'm going to make that dark. Okay. So you can see it's kind of working. Let's, I think what we need to do is our first plane, which is this one, we need to maybe increase the strength of that light. All right. And I think we can just make that white. Good. And the other one, I think we could maybe turn down the power of that one a bit. Okay. So what you can see here is if I go back to my principal shader, um, if we put the subsurface scattering way to the left, the snow becomes much more, uh, the, the shadows have much more of effect and it becomes uh, less kind of translucent looking because the light isn't able to scatter inside of the volume. The more subs subsurface scattering you bring in, it becomes more translucent, which the, the effect of that is the shadows become much less prominent. So that is what you're getting. And then if you want, if we just bring that subsurface scattering down to bring in the shadows and then bring in some specular, you'll see that we get a much more kind of icy look. Now, we're struggling to see that specular because the light is so bright. So we could perhaps, if we increase the subsurface scattering, are we going to see that? It's kind of making it look a bit like shiny ice. You can see that specular a bit more now. Um, and we could perhaps just, let's have a look. I don't know this. Let's see if the roughness is going to give us anything. Yeah, the roughness is perhaps making it more opaque looking, but 
I'm going to turn the specular off, roughness off, subsurface scattering down. And I think that's the kind of look that, that we want. Um, I'll come out of that camera and I'll just, let's just dolly in a bit closer here just so we can have a look a bit more up close. Um, so this is looking quite nice. And obviously now when we come up close, you can see that the simulation isn't detailed enough. This is obviously too blobby. Um, um, and it's, it's, not, it's not looking right. But it, it, when we're closer up, we can see this snow texture working. So let's increase that subsurface scattering. And it's making it feel a little bit more translucent, like that light is passing through it and spreading more easily. Bring it down and we increase those shadows and reduce that scattering. OK, that's looking nice. So let's just pull that back. So what we could do is um, a final thing is we could we could make this floor material just look a little bit more interesting. Let's just out of interest. Let's just see um, if we can get any feedback on this. So we haven't cached anything. We have got a fluid effects um, simulation happening at high settings. We've got two global subframe steps. We've got a decent amount of particles. We've got an open VDB mesher making this quite detailed mesh all happening live. And we've got this real time preview open. So let's just see if we can get any feedback. And you see, I think with what is going on, that is pretty cool that we can see this happening in front of us. We can see this snow breaking up, coming down the hill. And then it's going to make these two sections are going to smash nicely as it comes to the bottom. And they crack apart. And that's looking nice. So as you can see, even at these relatively low particle count settings uh, from this distance, this is looking pretty good, depending on what you need. You might even get away with this resolution of production. So that's that's pretty decent. So let's finally just make this floor look a little bit more interesting. So we'll go to our diffuse um, texture. And what we will do is let's just pull this aside. So I've got a little bit more room. I'll stick the output over there. So what we could do is we could, instead of it being a diffuse, let's bring in a shader, a glossy, and we'll have it as a glossy instead of a diffuse, which makes it reflective. So let's make it a darker reflective color. And now we'll just include a bit of roughness. So the, what these uh, lines are, the reflections of our scene lights, obviously. So let's just bring in some roughness like that, and let's make it way darker. OK, and then we could just maybe put a little bit of bump on this. So instead of doing it, we're going to do it with we're just going to do bump. We're not going to do true displacement here. So if we go to the material settings, we send the displacement method to bumps. So that's fine. OK, so then all we need to do is create a bump map to put in our displacement um, uh, channel. So let's go to uh, vector displacement. And we'll put the displacement of that into the displacement slider. And now we just need a black and white map to put into this height input. So let's just use a texture noise. So we're using inbuilt cycles noise. And let's map it correctly to the slope and the floor. So to do that, we'll go to input texture coordinate. And we're going to say take the UV details of those objects. And that's how we're going to map it. So if I, we highlight this, we can see how the, this noise is mapped to our um, plane. Let's do the factor will be black and white values between 0 and 1. So let's just alter this. because Well, I'll put it in so you can see what it looks like. Put that into the height. And now we've got this bump. So obviously the scale is way too high at 1. Let's put a scale of 0 0.05. And now we've got this little wavy bump. But... Clearly, that's not right. It looks not good. So what we can do, I'll just zoom in on that noise texture. Let's, if we increase the scale, that means that the, the noise is going to get smaller. So that's getting smaller. So even, I mean, even that at much lower scale, let's put 0 0.005. Even that is a little bit more interesting, isn't it? But if we add more detail and a bit of distortion, we're going to get some interesting lines in there. Okay, and again, we want that 
maybe even less. We just want a suggestion of this, really, to break up those flat surfaces. I think we could go higher than that, 0 0.002. And that'll probably do. Okay. So there we have our snowball um, simulation. So just finally, let's do one more thing. Um, I'm just going to bring that real-time preview up a bit. Press pause. Let's get our emitter. Let's duplicate it and move it. Um, I come out my camera. Where's that emitter? Right, so we've made a new one. Let's move it to the side. And in this new one, we'll keep all, all of the settings the same. Apart from, we'll go to the extended data tab and we will change the stability from 10 to 3. And let's let's try playing that through. Oh, and actually what I've forgotten to do is in the open VDB mesher, what I need to do in the general tab is I need to drop in the new emitter into the source. Otherwise, it's not going to read it and it's not going to make the mesh. So let's hit play. So now we should get two different snowballs happening. Um, we should get the one that we did with the nice big clumps and this one should break up more. And there we go, because we've re reduced that stability slightly. This one is broken up way more on impact. And we press pause. Let's come back to our view. Hit render. And now we've got much bigger clumps in that one than we have in this one just by reducing that stability amount. And you can get all the different looks you would require. Um, if you wanted to in our emitter, we could put the stability right down to one. We're just going to give us another look. Let's see if we can get any kind of real-time feedback on this. So it's pretty slow, but if you imagine it's doing an awful lot, really, um, here we've got real-time preview rendering this in real-time with subsurface scattering. We've got fluid effects working at high settings. We've got global two sub-steps for X particles, and we've got two emitters um, emitting these uh, particles, 15,000 particles each. And then we've got the open VDB mesher making quite a high um, density mesh. And we're still getting pretty decent playback as we, uh, as we cycle this through. So let's stop it, which will allow these 20 samples to kick in. And I'm pretty pleased with that. That's looking good. So that is the basics of setting up a granular uh, simulation to simulate some snow in X particles and rendered with Cycles 4D. So lots more free video tutorials to come. So please subscribe to us on YouTube and then you'll get a notification as soon as they've been published. Don't forget you can try X particles and Cycles 4D for free with a full month, fully featured trial. Just go to the Insidium website for all of those details. All right, that's it from me now. See you next time.